Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and video show which brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, and experience from hundreds, thousands of successful people from around the world. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you won't miss a new episode. I'm your host, Fritz Bussemaker, and today I'm delighted and privileged to have a conversation with Michael Levine. Michael, welcome to the program. Well, dear friend, thank you very, very much for sharing your valuable international audience with me. Michael, when I prepared my presentation, I also contacted, I'd say, a fellow brand maker, Peter Sarkov, who lives out of Atlanta, and he said that you have a legendary status. So nevertheless, I am going to introduce you a, just a little bit for the people who are new to this. Um, Wall Street Journal calls you America's premier brand expert. Now, you've been studying success for over 30 years. You have appeared in countless TV shows, uh, including Slots on Good Man in America, and uh, today, for the last 20 years, authored over 19 books. And we're going to talk about your latest book, Broken Windows and Broken Business. Also interested, you point out you're born with dyslexia, and you're the only person in the world who lectures at both Harvard and Oxford without ever attending college, which is quite interesting. It is interesting. And, and you uh, have represented a record-breaking uh, 58 Academy Award winners, 34 Grammy Award winnings, and 43 New York Times bestsellers, uh, including some very famous global household names. So again, Michael, welcome to the program. We're going to talk about branding in a show called The Brand Called You. Now, when you meet people for the first time, when you yes. introduce yourself, yes, what's the first thing you want to tell people who, for, about who you are? Well, I tend to, just as a habit, ask them more about themselves. I'm more curious about them than telling them about me. But if someone were to say, Michael, what, is, what have you done professionally? I generally say I've done two things. For the last 35, six, no, 36 years, I've owned a very prominent PR and branding firm in Los Angeles. But we've represented a lot of very, very famous people. And in addition to that, I have written a series of books, um, most of them about business and communications and psychology. So that's how I introduce myself. But I'm I'm very curious about people okay. and what okay. they do. Good. Um, now, you, uh, when you introduce, maybe this is cultural, but do you keep it professional or do you also tell a little bit about your private life? Well, I... If if I'm asked a question, I try to answer as openly as I can. And, uh, you know, it certainly, depending on the context, but I try to, if somebody asks me about some personal challenges I've had, I, I try to be very open about it because I want to give them encouragement also that they may uh, be able to overcome their challenges. Great. Got, uh, thank you so far. Uh, now, because I, I, I'm asking a question, because if you look at your profile, you do mention you're born with dyslexia. I was, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so how has that influenced where you are today? Well, it's interesting, my dear friend Fritz. And this I'm talking to your audience about. Now, look, I had a disability when I was growing up, particularly difficult because in the time that I was growing up, we had 40, 50 years ago, we had a different word for dyslexia. It was called dumb. And so I was a very, very poor student, had no idea why I was such a poor student. Uh, and <clears throat> I barely graduated high school. And key word there is barely. Mm -hmm. And then um, went on and pursued my passions. I was interested in two things in my life as a young person. And knowing what you're interested in is can be an advantage in certain ways. I was interested in the entertainment industry and I was interested in politics. And um, decided that the entertainment industry was the one I wanted to pursue. Came out here to California with little or nothing and um, ultimately, as time went along, this disability that I had 
this disadvantage that I had turned out strangely over time to be an advantage because um, what it heightened in me was my powers of observation. And uh, I have tried to uh, explain to people that I'm not very bright, but I'm above average at watching what bright people do. And that's been very, very helpful to me. Um, that bell will go off in a minute. I'm terribly sorry about that. That's uh, that'll go off in any any minute. All right. So I am not very bright. I'm above average at watching what bright people do, but I am also above average at watching what dopey people do. And both have been extraordinary advantages to me over my life. Okay, a bit of a tangent. Um because I, I was watching an interview with you about, okay, the three things people, uh, successful people have in common. Yes. Obsession, optimism, and obligation. Yes. Um, well, arbitrarily, I would qualify you as a very successful person seeing what you've accomplished over the years. So that interest you talked about, uh, did that grow into an obsession or is it still an interest? Well, I think that I pursued my career with a strong degree of obsession because of my disadvantages i had to work harder i had to do more i felt by the way dyslexia gives you an sometimes daily sometimes hourly reminder of your inferior inferior in inferiority um and so it is a powerful, and it was for me, a powerful mechanism in trying to come up with workarounds and alternatives. And it drove, it was driven by an obsession to not fail. Um, so disadvantages, the, the point that I want your wonderful listeners to hear me say and think about for their own lives mm -hmm. is this. All of you, everyone, you, Fritz, anyone listening to the show, has a disadvantage in life. That disadvantage, if you can work with it, can strangely turn into an advantage. And that sounds very odd. The advantage of disadvantage. But I'd like your audience to think about it and and work with that a bit. Okay. Good question. Something to pass on. Now, so as a young uh, guy, you went to uh, Hollywood. I did. How could you take us a little bit uh, about how did you then end up... Um, becoming a brand expert? Well, friend, um, you know, I believe very much, and I probably you do as well, um, in something called the proximity principle. Mm -hmm. The proximity principle is that if you want to pursue something with all your heart, it's a good idea to get in a location that is conducive to pursuing whatever it is you want with all your heart. So for example, in America, if you wanna be in the fashion industry, I would strongly encourage you to go to New York or perhaps San Francisco. If you wanna work in the entertainment industry in America, I'd encourage you to go to Los Angeles or New York. If you wanna work in, um, politics, I'd encourage you to go to Washington, D.C., and so forth and so on. Because of the proximity principle, you will meet uh, any number of important teachers and mentors along your way. And I cannot emphasize enough for your audience, dear friend, the power of a, a good mentor. 
Now, I I use the term good mentor because there's a lot of terrible mentors. Let me give you a little Let me give a little clue to your audience. Any person in your life who has an emotional connection to you or an emotional desire from you likely is a bad mentor. A good mentor does has no particular emotional connection to you and therefore can coach you in such a way that is devoid of any emotional subconscious feeling. So um, I am sure that there are people watching this show all over the world and they're thinking about whether or not they have or have, don't have a mentor. I would strongly encourage a mentorship relationship. Generally, that's someone older. Generally, that's someone tough and successful and willing to tell you um, the, the 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 truth, the the brutal facts, as I as I refer to them. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to that thought because I want to come back to that later, but. Also, again, young guy in uh, in LA uh, proximity. So probably somewhere you you're starting to meet people. It's helping to create a little bit of serendipity. That's what I'm uh, picking up here. Uh, but yep. how how did that trend? and lessons and lessons? Yeah, Fritz. Let's go back to my opening point. I'm not very bright, but I am above average at watching what bright people do. And that has been damn helpful. Additionally, I'm even better, even more above average at watching what dopey people do. Um, Being able to observe that, is that and what it, don't do the dopey things and do the successful things. For example, I'll give you a very simple one, Fritz. You know, I do a lot of speaking, public speaking, and very often young entrepreneurs will come up to me. Young, maybe people in their 30s. They have a business. They've just started it. They're trying to get it moving, successful. And they'll come up to me after a speech and say, Mr. Levine, that was a great speech. Thank you so much. And I'll say, you're very welcome. And I'll learn about what they do. And I'll say to them, you know, you sound like you have an interesting idea and you sound like an interesting person. I'd like to stay in touch with you. Would you be kind enough to give me a business card? And they'll very frequently say, "A business card? I I I don't have one. I didn't bring it. I don't. I it's in my car. I lost it. I don't have any. I ran out." And I'll say, "Son, what are you thinking? What are you thinking?" Now. When I met very, very, very successful people along my way, and I said to them, do you have a business card? A hundred out of a hundred said yes. So there's an example of where, well, if you want to be like the successful people carry a business card if you don't want to be like the successful people don't carry a business card okay so what's your take on people so no i've moved uh, everything online so uh I'm, let's connect on linkedin so that's a strong that's not a good advice or is it it is not good advice because it presupposes that the person you're speaking with is going to go home and connect with you on LinkedIn. When the person leaves you, they're never going to remember a thing about you. Too much hassle. Remember your name. 
So for a very, very, very small investment, you can give them a business card. So they have your name, your address, your phone number, your email, all the, and then when they go home, they'll be confronted with the card and they may or may not use it, or you may reach out to them or something. That's actually very nice. Text I, I, it. Yeah. Fritz, texting is not talking. Texting is not talking. Right. I fully understand. And, it's a and very let me example. also say to your wonderful audience, I know this is not going to be popular, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because I mean it. I, I say it with love. I say it with respect. And I'd like your audience, if they'd be willing to even write it down. Dear friends, often, not always, often, not always, texting and emailing are fertile gardens for misunderstanding and confusion. There we are. So if you want to be misunderstood or confused on occasion, send somebody a text. But if you want to be heard clearly, try to speak to them either on the phone or in person. And Michael, I have two segues now I'm going to choose from Great. you because Great. this touches you first of all on your latest book. I'm sure your audience is now throwing things at the screen, calling me a liar. Yeah. No, um, I, I get you, but uh, this is a segue to your uh, book about uh, broken windows. It's yes, the small things. Yes. Uh, it's also another, and another topic, maybe we'll first cover that, uh, but I just want to already share that with you, is that uh, in, in current days, brands and celebrities have to navigate uh, social media. Correct. And they have to take a position. They have to, a moral and a social position. So they don't have to take a position. Nope. They don't have to at all. They can mm -hmm. and often often do, but they don't have to. There's no law in, in, yeah. in any country in the world that says you have to do anything on social media. Okay, so it is, although it is expected from them, uh, so, you know, sorry, I, I'm an actor. I'm not. Uh, it's, it's Jurgen Klopp, the trainer of the trainer coach of Liverpool, who was asked a political question, said, hey, I'm a trainer of a football club. You should not be asking me that. Correct. I think generally speaking, People should not comment on things that are unnecessarily controversial or uh, not an area of expertise for them. Okay. Coming back then to how the smallest revenues recap the biggest rewards. And right. that business card seems to be an example of such so, an advice. That's right, Fritz. You, you just said it beautifully. Fritz, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. If you don't have the brains, if you own a business and you don't have the brains to walk around the planet with a business card, then you probably don't have the brains to make your business very successful. Now, I said probably. There are exceptions always, mm -hmm. but the way you do anything is the way you do everything. If you have messy house, you probably have a messy brain, you have a messy car, you have a messy life, you have a messy thinking process. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So that, that assumes uh, people subconsciously are quite congruent, practice what you preach. Yes. I, I mean, people who are successful overwhelmingly, not perfectly, have an impeccable, they are impeccable with their word. When they say, I will have something to you Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., they don't mean Wednesday at 11.15. They're impeccable. Time is... They have a great reverence for time. Um, and so I'll tell you one, uh, I'll tell you four things that I've noticed, dear Fritz, in my mm -hmm. life. These are somewhat painful, I guess. 
But I'll tell you four things that I've noticed in my life about people who have underachieved in their lives. Okay, so I'm going to ask everyone listening to the show, I want you to think, please, of two people. Two, just two people. Any two you want can be a woman or a man, gay or straight, black or white. Just think of two people who have some potential, but have somehow underachieved in their life. Now, they're not in prison. They've had some success, but they've not had nearly the success that they deserve given their talents. They have underachieved. I'm going to tell you four things about these two people. You, Fritz, you can play with me. Think yeah. of two. Audience, think of two. Think of two. Okay, you've got your two in your head. Here we are. Number one, they have a screwed up relationship with reality. They create their own reality. They live life, not on life's terms, but on their terms. They believe that what, even if, if reality says A, they believe B. They have a screwed up relationship with reality. Number two, they have a screwed up relationship with responsibility. It's never their fault. It's always someone else, usually their parents, Trump, men, women, the world, sexism, racism, every kind of excuse. It's never their fault. Number three, they have a screwed up relationship with communications. You call them up. They seldom pick up their phone. They don't return calls properly. It's always a hassle to communicate with them. And fourth, they have a screwed up relationship with time. So you meet them for 12, a 12 noon lunch. They show up at 1215. They're always late. They're always screwed up relating time. Those are four qualities present in that I've found in all underachieving people. Now, your audience is their hair is probably on fire right now, trying to think about whether that's true or whether they're one of those people. And Fritz, you're probably also thinking if those are true for some of the people you know. But those are that has been my experience, dear friend. I will call, pause there for a second. Let that think in in the audience. Yeah. Let's think about it. Yep. Screwed up relationship with reality. Yeah. Screwed up relationship with responsibility. Screwed up relationship with time. Screwed up relationship with communications. If you want to be very successful, you cannot be screwed up with reality, time, communications, or responsibility. Love that. Can you give me a definition? What does success mean to you when you talk about successful people? Yeah. Well, it's not. Uh, success must be defined by each person. But it begins with one question, Fritz, that has two parts. This one question with two parts is the same question that you must ask yourself personally and professionally. So all the people listening to the show are going to be asked a question right now. It's the beginning question to Life 101. Unless you can answer these two questions, one question with two parts, it's one question with two parts. Unless you can answer these this one question with two parts, you're basically just circling around in a parking lot, driving nowhere. You're in a car, you're driving, but you're not going anywhere. And the one question, it's the same question for the professional life as the personal life. And the one question is, 
What do you most want? And what are you willing to give up to get it? What do you most want? And what are you willing to give up to get it? Now, in my case, I wanted to work in the entertainment industry. That's what I wanted. And what I was willing to give up to get it was just about everything. So if you said to me, Michael, have you watched uh, all the TV series um, of uh, all the episodes of Seinfeld? I'd say, Fritz, I've never watched one episode. And you'd say, Michael, how could that be? I was working. Michael, I know in America on Sunday, they have football games, American football games. The average American male making $50,000 a year or less watches three football games on Sunday. Mr. Levine, on average, how many football games do you watch on Sunday? None. No time. Why is that? Because I'm working. Now, you might say, well, that doesn't sound very fun. Well, maybe for you it isn't. Then you shouldn't do it. Then you should watch three football games on Sunday. But don't bitch and moan that I have a bigger house than you. Or That's, or that's, com that's coming back to the responsibility of yeah. being responsible yeah. for your own decisions. And uh, the so I want to say to my yeah. listeners all over Europe and other places, dear friends, I'm with you right now. I'm not physically with you, but I am with you right now, with Fritz and you. We are together. Dear friends, what do you most want in your life five years from now? Tell me. Paint a picture for me. Write it for me. And don't give me 15 things. Give me one that you most want in the next five years. And then, dear friends, please tell me what you're willing to give up to get it. So there we are. Now, I wanted to write a book, Fritz, called Broken Windows, Broken Business. I wrote a book called Broken Windows, Broken Business. It's a business book. It's a bestseller. I wanted to write it. Well, dear friend, I had to give up a lot to do that. But for me, that made sense. Now, for someone else watching the show, that might not make sense. For you, it might not make sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, But th does that also mean that success is partly being able to define your own metrics? What you yes, feel? Yes, of course. If so you, how do you don't know... If you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter what road you take, right? If you're living in Europe and you say, what I want in the next year is to move to America, okay? Well, then first thing I'm going to say is, okay, what are you willing to give up? Well, I'm willing to give up seeing my family a lot. I'm willing to give up a, mm -hmm. a, a great, my, great, my comfort. Uh, but you know where America is and you know where you are. And you know whether you have to go east or west or north or south. And eventually you do know. Michael, I, I, a couple of questions I still want to ask you because I feel they're relevant for this discussion, if I may. I just uh, picked up, opened the last two email uh, of your email letter I um, received from you. And I was yes, struck sir. by the fact that in two cases, I don't know if I was just biased by these last two examples, but the last one had a story about uh, Rod Stewart's eldest son uh, being rushed to the hospital. About uh, who? Uh, Rod Stewart's son. Yes. The mm -hmm. one before that last week, it was about Michael J. Fox discussing his illness. Yes. Uh, is it a coincidence that you talk about, you could say, people in your in your network you represent talking about 
them in their what, what happens in their private life? Is this making no, them? No, I people? look. These are these are timely incidents. Michael J. Fox is someone I discovered when he was 19 years old. The first time he ever came to my office for a meeting, he was on a TV show that hadn't started to air yet called Family Ties. Yeah. He showed up at my office. He was sitting in the lobby and two of my other employees thought he was an intern and asked him to move some boxes. <laughs> so uh, Michael uh, has just done a large interview cover story interview here in People Magazine, which is a very prominent American magazine. And so I wanted to share it with my friends. And you're my friend, Fritz. You're, we don't live in the same city. We don't even leave, live in the same country. But I wanted to share it with you. And then the second uh, one is I represented Rod Stewart. And his son has had some uh, issues, health issues, uh, that I wanted to share because a lot of my friends know I represented Broad Stewart, and so there we are. I do want to commend, I know we have to say goodbye pretty soon. Yeah. But I want to uh, commend a couple things. One is I would like all of the people watching this to make a commitment to ask that question, what do you most want? What are you willing to give up to get it? And then if they like, they can email it in to you, Fritz, if they care. Fritz, you can send them to me. I'd be most curious to see. And be specific. Be specific. What do you want in the next five years? And what are you willing to give up to get that? Second, if you're willing, we have a, a website on Broken Windows. It's called Broken Windows Book. B-O-O-K, brokenwindowsbook.com. I'd like you to take a look at it, if you'd be willing, because... Friends, it's the little things in life that matter. It's the little details. The reason Broken Windows has become a best-selling book throughout the world is because people understand that the little things have big consequences. How you do little things displays how you do big things. Anyway, Fritz, it's a real honor to speak with you. I do hope you will in the next couple of weeks, share some of the emails of some of the people. We who will write reach it. out. Write. Yeah, it's a wonderful question. And I, I'm i very honored to uh, be included with your valuable audience. Hey, Michael, we're going to stop here. There's so many questions we haven't covered in, yet and topics. We'll Maybe do it again. Time. We can do it we again. Can. We but this is a very again. great introduction, some thought-provoking advice for the young people out there. So, Michael, for now... Thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day in California. It was God lovely bless to you. To you. Oh, my pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.